Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard and today we're going to be doing a scope mounting 101 video and we're going to be using the Wheeler Firearm Accurizing Torque Wrench. And what that's going to be used for is of course mounting the scope, but we want to make sure we don't over torque or even under torque the scope rings and the scope mount when we put it on the firearm. We're going to be mounting the scope on a CZ512. This is a 22 Magnum. So there's not a whole lot of recoil to it. So I've got three different sets of scope rings here we're going to take a look at, and I'm probably going to pick the one in the middle anyways, but um, we're going to look at all three of them anyways. Now let me get the Tipton Ultravice set up up here. We'll get the gun set in it, and I'll show you a little bit about the basics of scope mounting on a rifle. Okay, so here's the three sets of rings I've got, and I'm just probably going to pick these middle ones here. These are medium height rings. You can see there's a little bit difference in the height that it mounts. Not much. Of course, these are extremely high right here, so there's going to be a big difference. But these are what they call see-through rings. Now, they're not clear, but it gives you this opening at the bottom here. It mounts your scope up really high. That way, it allows you to use your factory iron sights on your uh, firearm. And we're going to go ahead and go with these just because they're a little beefier. Now, the CZ512 is a 22 Magnum, so it's really not a whole lot of recoil to it, especially since it's a direct blowback and the massive bolt in there is going to eat up a lot of that recoil. So let's go ahead and get the uh, Ultravice set up here and get these medium rings mounted on there and see how it works because there's going to be some interference. There could be some interference with the uh, objective end of the scope over top of the factory site on there. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get it set up and see which one works the best for us. Okay, here's the Wheeler Fat Wrench or the fa Firearm Accurizing Torque Wrench. So we're going to get this thing opened up and it's in the little plastic blister pack here, I guess you'd call it. It's going to come, the case is going to come in two pieces just for display purposes. You can have your paperwork in there and we'll take the lid of the case and we'll go ahead and snap it on there. Now it just snaps right in there in the little plastic hinge piece. Well, let me fight with it. There we go. And it's going to come with this case that's going to have nine different bits in it, plus it's going to have a square drive bit in there in case you want to put a socket on something. And some scopes are mounted with a nut on there. But this is the torque wrench. Now it's going to be um, set up for between 10 and 65 pounds, I think it is. And when you get it, it's going to be set at its lowest setting. That's the storage setting on there. To adjust the torque on it, you've got the little guide here on the bottom that tells you, pull the end cap out, increase or decrease torque, twisting the end cap. So you're going to pull it out and you're going to turn it one way to increase the torque on it. And then you'll be able to see this little red line in there that's going to let you know where your torque value is set at and put it to whatever the screw is going to require and that's going to it's got a clutch mechanism in there that's going to slip at a determined torque setting so you're going to come with a little calibration sheet that's going to tell you the torque setting that they were going for was 10 inch pounds and the lower limit's going to be 8, the upper limit's going to be 12 so you're going to have a range of about 4 inch pounds which is not a whole lot of torque but this one uh, actually tested at 8.6 inch ounces or inch pounds. 30 inch pounds is going to be between 28 and 32. This tested at 30.7. And 60 inch pounds is going to be between 57 and 63. So the most important thing to know about when you're doing torquing of anything is you want everything equal. That way you're not applying more force to one direction or the other. So as long as you get it within the range of the screw and the screw is what determines the uh, actual torque that something's going to be set at. So it's going to come with the paperwork in here. It's going to have your usage and care instructions. It's going to have some information on how to set it up and everything. And then it's going to give you a little chart in here that's going to tell you based on your screw size, this is what your torque should be. So a number 632 UNC or 640, that's the thread count. 648 is fine. Commonly used on scope base mounts is going to be between 18 and 20 inch pounds. And if it's going to be a number eight screw, it's going to be between 28 and 30. And a number 10 is going to be between 40 and 45. And it tells you information in here about different size screws and bolts and stuff and what their actual torques should be. 
So what I've done here already is I've got the CZ512 already set up in here and I've used, uh, I got these little wheeler level, level, level things here to um, level up your gun so you can put your uh, scope on there. Now this one is made to go inside the action and rest on the rails. It's got a magnet that holds it in place. This gun does not have a bolt hold open on it. So what I've actually been able to do is mount it right up here stick it to the uh, rear sight on there. It's a good level spot on there. And I've leveled the gun up in both directions. And this one is one that you're gonna put on your um, turret cap on the top to get it leveled up. But I've leveled the gun up in both directions to give me a good start. And we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, scope opened up and get it mounted up there. Okay, so here's the Bushnell Trophy scope, a six to 18 by 50. We'll get the box opened up. And it's gonna come with a nice lens cleaning cloth wrapped around there. So if you need to polish up your lenses, there it's gonna be. And there's gonna be the paperwork wrapped around it there. And we'll get this box out of the way. There is no uh, sunshade for this one, so that's okay. But we'll get it out of the little plastic bag here. Noisy plastic bag. And there it is. It's a pretty nice looking scope, not very heavy at all. You got your throw ring right there. I wish it had a throw lever on it. It makes it a little easier to adjust. They're pretty stiff when they're brand new. But that's your zoom ring there, your power ring. And then it does have the fast focus adjustment on here for the ocular end. And that's so you can focus your eyesight on the reticle that's in there. Like I said, this one does not come with a sunshade, but it's probably going to be made to accept one. I'm just going to leave it just like it is. Now I've got my scope rings already taken apart. And one of the things I want you to notice on this one, this is your rear ring. Most of the time it doesn't matter if there's a, which ring goes where, but this one has a locator screw in it. And on the top of the CZ, there is a little notch cut out to that dovetail. And that's your locator pin where it goes. This one is kind of a sharp pointed pin and I can't retract it all the way back in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out. I'm not too worried about a lot of recoil on here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that locator pin out of there and hopefully there'll just be enough friction on here when I tighten this base down to the dovetail that it holds it in place. Uh, if it was a higher powered rifle, I would probably go ahead and do that. And the, actually the worst rifles I've seen for recoil are actually pellet guns, break barrel pellet guns seem to have terrible recoil on them. I've even had scopes, the, um, uh, spanner the the nut that holds the lens in actually pop out on me they're just terrible now i've already got the gun leveled up and everything so we're going to go ahead and get the bases mounted on there and with the dovetail it's just a little claw piece that cuts in that grips into there because it's kind of um uh, it's a dovetail it's the way it's cut and those will lock in underneath there and grip that right there Okay, so I've got everything leveled up and I'm gonna go ahead and put my scope ring on there. And you can see this is kind of an undercut piece there and it's gonna allow it to grab onto that dovetail. There's my little notch for my locator pin. I'm not gonna use that because I just, I just don't wanna use it on this one anyways. We're gonna go ahead and give these just a little snug and just to keep them from falling off because we're gonna set the scope up here and just see where everything is gonna hit so we can align it and get it where we want it. Now I'm not going to tighten them down real tight because I may have to slide them one direction or the other to get them where I want them. So I've got that one on there. We'll go ahead and put the front one on there. And like I said, just a little snug and don't, not even tight. We want them to slide. We just don't want them to fall off. All right, we'll take the scope and set it up there. And I've already got a problem right here the, the uh, objective end of my scope is hitting that. Now we could probably move it forward some. Let's see if we can move it forward enough. Now that's quite a bit forward there. Another thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna shoulder the rifle to see if it's gonna be where you want it. So we may end up going with the other rings on here, either the medium rings or maybe even the high rings so that we can take advantage of being able to use the factory iron sights on it. Okay, I went ahead and snugged it down with those low rings on there and 
without having everything set just where it needs to be, just enough so it doesn't fall off there. When I shoulder it, it actually, I'm clearing that rear side on there and the eye relief is pretty good. Actually, the eye relief on the scope itself is kind of short, but it's enough. And like I said, with such a light recoil, I'm not worried about smacking myself in the eye with the scope, but actually that, uh, that doesn't work too bad right there. And I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the low mount scopes on there. Okay. Now that I've done my trial fit on there, like I said, I've got these just snug, just kind of finger tight. I'm going to go ahead and take the scope back out and get everything. So it will, it can be mounted, I guess, semi-permanently. I'm going to have to re-level the firearm so I can level the reticle in there too. So that is right where I want them right there. Now you can take these screws out and put thread locker or Loctite or whatever you want on them. I prefer using the, um, the blue. It's kind of a, uh, check your colors, but this is a medium strength thread locker and they designed this for different size screws. So this will hold on there and not, I won't have to have any heat to break these loose should I need to. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and since I've got these right where I want them, I'm going to take the screws out one at a time, put just a dab of the thread locker on there and go from there. Now you do not have to go through all of these steps. Like I said, this is kind of a scope mounting 101. There's a lot more things you can do if you really want to, um, maximize your accuracy in your scope mounting. I mean, you can lap the uh, rings so that there's no force applying, uh, you know, kind of bending the scope. And that can happen if they're not perfectly aligned. And these are not the most expensive rings either. These are pretty cheap set I picked up on Amazon and they'll work for this firearm. Um, and it'll work for a lot of other firearms too. But like I said, there's so much more you can do to mount these to maximize your accuracy. All right, now that we've got these in there, we got the thread locker on there and we got them snug down. Now we wanna make sure that they're tight enough. Now with a little Allen wrench like this, you can easily over tighten it. So we're gonna go ahead and break out the, uh, the fat wrench here move some of this stuff out of the way and get the proper torque set up on it. All right, now the paperwork that come with the fat wrench is gonna tell you if it's a six, eight or 10, these are gonna be your torque values in there. If you're not sure what screw is in there with your set of rings, you can go ahead and measure them. So a number six is gonna be between 0 0.131 and 0 0.138 uh, diam the diameter of the bolt. Uh, eight is gonna be between 157 and 164, and then a 10 is gonna be between 184 and 190. So I'll take one of these screws here and check it with my calipers here. And we're looking at about 1.53, somewhere around there. So it's looking to me like, um, well, it looks to me like it's probably a number eight then. So we'll go ahead and set our torque for a number eight and which is going to be between 28 and 30 pounds. And we're going to start it at the lower end. So we're going to go 28 inch ounces or inch pounds on here. I'm sorry, which is going to be right about there. Make sure that's locked back in there. And now the bits that came with this, there's some pretty nice bits, but uh, unfortunately they did not have the size bit to fit the screws that came with my base. So I've got another set that I normally use. So I just take the bit out of there. And the nice thing is it's the regular standard quarter inch uh, bits that go in there. The nice thing about these, the ones that come with the fat wrenches are really long ones. So you can get in some pretty tight areas. So now that we've got everything set up, let's go ahead and get everything torqued down. All right, we've got the rings where I want them. We'll go ahead and torque them down. And here's what's going to happen when you do this. Once it reaches that torque and it slips when it does that, of course my bed got stuck in there, but the screw, the screwdriver bit will actually jump a little bit when it reaches the set torque value. And that lets you know that's as tight as it needs to be. And like I said, we set it at the lower end. So we'll go ahead and torque them a little bit at a time each. And there it went ahead and slipped. And 
and there we go now those rings are going to be on there nice and tight so now what we're going to do since i took this out i'm going to have to re-level everything back up and then put the scope in there and check the reticle and everything and make sure it is you know good with the rifle all right i've got the rifle all leveled back up we're going to go ahead and get the scope i'm going to go ahead and throw this back to its low power setting and we'll get it put up on there now this one having the side parallax adjustment on it that goes to the left side and then your elevation turret and your windage turret are going to be right there now i've got the rifle leveled up so we can take this little level and set it right on top of that elevation turret and rotate it where we want it let's go ahead and get these caps on there and get them started now one of the things you'll notice about the caps is there's going to be a gap in there when you put them on there. So what you do not want to do is you do not want to tighten one side completely down and then go tighten the other side. But you want to mind that gap when you're tightening these down and try to keep it as even as you can as you go to apply the torque to it. Now with four screws on these, what you want to do is tighten one on one side and then one the opposite corner on the other side of it to keep the torque even. That's the goal is to keep it even and equal. All right, it might be a little hard to see, but this is the gap you want to make sure is equal or even. That's between the top half of the ring and the lower half of it while you keep everything level. Once you've got it to this point, go ahead and shoulder it again because you might want to move it forward or backward to make sure your eye relief is where you want it. I do notice it is in a different spot than when I shouldered it the first time, so just make sure it's comfortable. And that actually feels pretty good. What you want to do is you want to make sure that whenever you shoulder the rifle that you don't have to adjust your head placement every time you go to shoot. You want to get it to where when you put that rifle up there and you're ready, your cheek always goes in the same spot and your view inside the scope, you don't want to have that black ring too small. You want to be able to see the full all the way around the inside, the field of view. You want it to be clear all the way around there. So every time you shoulder it, you want to make sure it's in the right spot. And do this at a blank wall so that you don't, you're not focusing on anything other than the reticle itself. And it actually looks like I could move it back just a little bit. Now I didn't tighten these down, so I should be able to slide it just a hair. Well, I may have to loosen it up just a little bit. That's my problem there. Upon further investigation, I'm going to have to go with the higher rings. It's not quite going to work out like I want it. Okay, so to solve the problem without changing out my scope rings, because I like the wider ones with the four screws on it, and I, I like that there's more surface area there to give it more friction and less chance of it moving around, I just went ahead and removed the rear buckhorn part of the sight. And that gives me the clearance I need to get the scope on there and get the actual um, relief that I need. Again, I don't wear the glasses when I'm shooting. So now I was able to move the scope back a little bit farther and get the good eye relief I need. And it fits on there pretty nice. And it's actually a pretty good uh, looking scope with the rifle too. Now I barely got enough room in between that scope, the objective end and that rear sight on there to, uh, I don't know if I can get a piece of paper in between there, but I can see daylight in it. So it's not touching it and it shouldn't affect anything. Um, I, I cut out some of the part of it because I, I did some things and forgot to turn my microphone back on. It's on now, and I've already got everything torqued down. I went ahead and torqued the screws down. I did lighten the torque on it a little bit, just because there's not, there is good thread engagement there, but maybe not enough. And I only backed it off to like 20 pounds. I backed it off about five inch pounds to uh, get the torque on there. And it kind of makes me wonder after using this, um, some of the other scopes I mounted, I don't think I tightened them quite as tight as what I've done with the fat wrench here. Now this being a accurate, accurate, a tool, you know, a good accurate tool for um, mounting scopes, it makes me think some of my older ones I might not have torqued down as tight as they needed to be. Maybe I'll go back and check them all. 
um, but if you're gonna mount something and you want it nice and secure and you're not real familiar with how tight something should be get you one of these pick one of these up um, they're not terribly expensive I don't remember actually Wheeler sent me this one for a review but I was probably gonna buy one anyways just to make my scope mounting more accurate um, I'll put some links in the description below for some of the tools and things I use on here like the little level 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 thing that torque wrench um, the link for the scope which I did pick up on Amazon and the rings I picked up on Amazon um, all three sets of them I picked up on Amazon but um, they're not bad it's not a high powered rifle it's not a large recoil rifle so it's you don't need to go out and spend you know $150 on a set of nice good steel rings to put on there if you don't want to of course if you put better materials on there better products items whatever it's going to be better but I mean there's a trade-off between a diminishing return I guess on your investment there uh, you spend a lot of money on rings a lot of money on the scope yes it's a lot better but is it really worth putting on your whatever firearm you're mounting it to Just keep the price scale pretty close anyways anyways um I'm going to be doing a review on the CZ-512 coming up someday. I'm not sure when, but uh, keep uh, hit that notification bell when you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and you'll know when I do that. Hit this button up here to check out some of my other videos, and thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.